What up my freaks, Ruinous Insight here with part 23 of my Total War Warhammer 3 Draka Immortal Empires campaign. So as we saw last time, Daratok faced off against the second of the Zinchen cultist armies and came out ahead. We now have one left until we're done with the ritual spawned armies and uh, we're looking pretty good, at least in this regard. Also, Daratok is sitting in the jungles of Chion, so if the enemy army continues to advance, they'll probably have to face off against both his army and that of the garrison. Uh, we do have to stay here for three turns anyway, so that is not something they can win. Clearly we can even win without the garrison, but uh, yeah, maybe we'll draw it out. We'll see. Depends on how patient I am, which is usually not very much. Now, I do believe we have quite a few things to do this time, or this turn rather, so let's get to them. And, you know what, let's do it in order. Draika, you're first, as well as should be. Now, you, I believe, are going to go to Pig Barter. There is something of a stack here, but it's mostly Nurglings and garbage, so it's probably not worthy of a... Uh, of an actual proper fight. So maybe we'll auto resolve this one and we'll do the proper fight against the uh, uh, against the forces of Zinch. Oh, close victory, eh? Hmm. Medium casualties. You know what? Maybe we'll do this manually just to reduce the casualties. Draka is plagued up, so she will lose. Yeah, all right, fine. Well, let's move everybody else, then we'll do this quick fight, then we'll end the turn, and then hopefully fight the uh, forces of Zinch there. Now, Dulcith, you're... Why are you not in range? What? Okay, wait, well, last episode we specifically moved you to... Oh... <laughs> How did that happen? Oh, wait, muddled minds. Are you telling me that village, all the way from here, absolutely nowhere near us and... Oh, there he is. Uh, absolutely somewhat near us, but really quite far away, and not even in contact with us, certainly, went ahead and used muddled minds on Dalsith to protect Shattered Stone Bay. This is a very bizarre usage, especially as it's protecting a faction that it's, I assume, not even allied with. I don't even know if they have any contact with each other. This is just bizarre. Why would you do that, village? Okay, well, Zinch shenanigans are Zinch shenanigans. The annoying thing about this, of course, is the fact that uh, Dalsith was supposed to take out Shattered Stone Bay. Now... Hmm. Okay, here's what we'll do instead. Screw Shattered Stone Bay. We're gonna move Dalsith up to Pig Barter. And we're going to capture it right after Drake is done with it. Because Drake is gonna raise it, obviously. And then we'll hit Shattered Stone Bay after Dreadrock with Draka or even with Dalsith again. And there's stuff for him to do. Kind of annoying that we moved specifically here. And, oh, look at that little, uh, that little Nurgle mini maw there. Do the thing. There you go. That was like a plant, okay. <laughs> I wanted to see the uh, uh, the toofs. Alrighty, anyway, Pig Barter, we will attack you in a second. Let's move everybody else around. First, we'll probably also give you some levels. Tala Bitterbark. Hey, you, my friend, we're heading up north to Throt. We were potentially going to stop by at Aberheim uh, to give it to Vlad. Though, we could keep traveling for quite a while without stopping there. I really feel like Vlad will probably get it himself. You know what? Let's let's leave it to Vlad for now. We're gonna we're gonna hurry up to uh, Throt. Ooh, wow, Throt is down here, eh? Hmm. I just had a thought. Maybe we can bait him into something. Wait. Let's move everybody everybody else around. But uh, I do have an idea here. Uh, Aka, you were going to go after World's Edge Archway last episode. Uh, but now that I think about it, considering you're at about half HP, if we take sufficient damage at World's Edge Archway and then we raise it, we'll also move back where we're suffering even more attrition, which seems a little bit much, especially as we still need to take Mount Gunbad. I think in that light, what we'll do is we'll actually encamp you, and then we'll send you to Mount Gunbad instead. This will allow it to complete to tier 5, which will mean it'll be worth more when we raise it, and then we can capture it, heal up, and take out World's Edge Archway afterwards. And of course, uh, give all this to Vlad afterward. And then I guess after we give all this to Vlad, we either destroy the faction for good, they only have four settlements, so Skarsnik will die if we take out all this. And there is still Karazakarag to consider, but I suppose that Akka could work on that as well. Hmm. I'm just wondering when it would be the most beneficial to move back up this way and start working on the uh, 
Uh, start working on the Slaves of Zar. Also, I just realized that the Silver Pinnacle has fallen, so you are out of settlements. Okay, well then, Khalid can go to hell. He's not the real deal, anyway. He's not a... He's not the real Lamians. Uh... Yeah, well, him having broken our treaty, then he kind of deserves it. Anyway, back to it. Adair talk, Colas. Uh, you know what? I don't think you need to be here anymore. I doubt that Richmond will come down here, and even if he does, he'll have to go for Mon Fog first, since it's a ruin, or at least sit there. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna send Colas to the Waterfall Palace. Alrighty, and then I guess we can build a few elves. Like so, Colas is gonna be our elven army after all. Now, in terms of which elves... Not which elves, uh, but which elves... <laughs> All right, that was really stupid, but I don't regret it. Uh, who are we gonna build here? I will probably want a few. Ah, oh, man, we want a mix of stuff, don't we? We might want some poison. We want might want some starfire shafts for some uh, uh, for some armor piercing. The deep wood scouts do more damage, but as I recall, their armor piercing is garbage, isn't it? Uh, let's see here. We've got four armor piercing base damage, or four armor piercing damage versus the. 16 armor piercing damage on the glade guard with starfire. What about the deepwood scouts? They have magical damage. And they also have four armor piercing, but of course being a uh, being the swift silver shards, uh, they have much lower range. Hmm. And they can all fire while moving, correct? As in the glade guard can as well. Yeah. All right, it looks like we'll be going for a mix. I guess we'll go two, 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 and two, and then we'll see uh, what we get after. And in fact, if anything, we really want Waystalkers, not this garbage. Can we build Waystalkers soon? Do we even have access to the thing? We don't have access to the thing, do we? Wait, does our faction even... Our faction doesn't get access to the elite units of the elves, so we don't actually have access to Sisters of the Thorn or to... Uh, uh, or to uh, way watchers rather, not way stalkers. Alrighty, well, Deepwood Scouts it is then. So, Colas, you're gonna be a little bit limited. I'm gonna hope that the Hawk Riders can do a lot for you. Uh, we'll start with the cheapest, I guess, which is gonna be the Hag Banes to provide a little bit of poison. Hmm. I'm actually now wondering uh, so, the Hawk Riders, what's their armor piercing? It's at 8. Oh, which ain't actually all that bad. Uh, the. Glade Guard with Starfire Shafts do double up on it. Hmm. Nah, we probably still want at least a couple of these. And I'll need more micro as we have to, you know, rock, paper, scissors everybody. Mm, but it is what it is. Yeah, that's fine. I was just wondering whether we should just not bother with the Glade Guard with Starfire Shafts and build a bunch of Hawk Riders instead, but uh, maybe we'll get at least a couple of these. Although, honestly, I feel like the Hawk Riders would probably provide quite a bit more value to it. Eh, whatever. We'll 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 have a nice mix of both. Anyway, I'm thinking too much about this. Let's go next. Uh, Durthu, you, my friend, have places to be, and those places are attacking elves. So, Azra will fall, or the other Azra will fall. And uh, next up, that's Draika, Akatala, Durthu, Colas, Dertok, and I believe that's everybody. All right, now as to the plan. So Throt is here. By the looks of it, he's going for Essen. He... Hmm... It would be really good if we could get him to attack Griffin Wood, because it actually has a proper garrison. Now, he probably thinks he's... I mean, he's got a lot of stuff. Alright, there's one way we could try to bait this. Uh, let's get an Ancient Tree Man here. Let's say... Let's go with this guy. Murder of Spite. Stress... Blah. Stress Layeth is probably the best one. I mean, what else do we have here? I wouldn't want to shadow one here. It's got to be one of these. Let's go with Strasslath, Murder of Spites. That's the uh, little mini Mortis engine, isn't it? Not that it would be super effective against Throt, mind you, but nonetheless. And what we'll want to do here is not build any units, but recruit one. I've noticed that when you start recruiting, it seems that the AI tries to prioritize you more than uh, than usual, just to try to stop you from recruiting. This could be a superstition on my part, not actually true, uh, but I feel like that's what I've encountered, so that's what we're gonna try. Will he go for this? No idea. Uh, now we probably want to give you some stuff just in case. 
as to what stuff, if we're not going to recruit any units, because we don't want to screw ourselves over. You know what we want? We probably want Pan's Impenetrable Pelt. That's what we want. Why? Because these guys have rattling guns, and if we have a single malevolent ancient tree man, it's a mouthful, uh, the rattling guns would probably target it. If this actually works, mind you. Now what we want to do is we probably want to make Essen a less viable target. So we'll want to build another Lord here. Oh, we're going to be minus like 10k, but whatever. Uh, we want to build another Lord here. Let's go Befuddlement of Mischiefs. This is all money loss that's only going to be on one turn, so it's not going to make that much of a difference anyway. And we'll want to actually summon stuff here. The idea now is that we want... Aka 2, I guess, just a temporary lord, to essentially make it not a good idea to attack Essen. If Thrawd attacks Essen, maybe he'll kill Aka 2 and the stuff that's in there, but he'll probably lose half his army doing so. And even if he does, then Strasleth can attack him. If he goes for Griffin Wood, then, well, actually, that's what we want. If he goes for Mordheim or Nagenhof, then Akka can attack him there after he presumably sacks or raises them, and Strasleth can immediately summon a bunch of units that can destroy him together, this without needing Tala's intervention. Am I overthinking this? Yes, but, you know, that's that's life. Uh, let's get you Dark Heart as well. I know for a fact that uh, Auto Resolve does uh, take that into account, so uh, that means the AI probably takes it into account. Now, I guess what we want to do is want to give you guys some items. Uh... I actually don't care about what happens to Akka, but, hmm. He's probably going to hit Essen. On the other hand, this might work. The mustering thing will draw him in. <laughs> or none of this might work. He might give up and just go back north to Vitevo. I don't know. We're going to give Strasslet some temporary items. Uh, so let's get you. How about Discord? Mm, Trickster Shar, now Wanda Jet. Featherfoot Torque, Berserker Sword is garbage. We got Scroll of Blast, Sword of Battle. Ooh, Talisman of Protection. And we'll take that. Uh, ooh, Tormentor Sword, definitely. And do we need any enchanted? Oh, well. The Potion of Speed would be useless, Anya. Same with... Actually, I don't think there's any that we can use. Who has this? Dare Talk? Nah, you can keep that. Terrifying Mask of V, you already caused terror, so it's irrelevant. Featherfoot Torque, well, there are no flying rats as yet. Though perhaps there should be. Alright, Potion of Speed, I guess, is the only thing that you can use. And then I guess we'll get... Hey, what did I just take away? Potion of Speed? My bad. Alright, and what the heck? That was so weird. Uh, let's just give you a bunch of random ancillaries. Like so. Oh, this better work, because if this doesn't work, I'm going to be salty, because this is a waste of time. But we'll just then use Strasleth to attack... Uh, to attack Throts. Give you a Force Spirit... Eternal Guard Commander gives you nothing. Hawk Companion gives you nothing. Hunting Hound would not be useful for us because we wouldn't want to intercept uh, Throt. And let's give you... Well, I can't use the Young Stag. Okay, so that's it. Alrighty, now Akka. So, if he attacks Akka, the garrison here is kind of garbage, so I do expect Akka to die. You know what? Then we probably don't want to give any items to Akka. If he dies, he dies. It's fine. And you know what? While we're doing this, if we're going to sacrifice like 10k for this, we're going to summon another lord here. Actually, Blight of Terrors would be good, right? This was a bunch of slaves? Yeah. Alright, so what we'll do here is we'll summon this Isalal. And we're going to give him... Okay, we're going to give him one wolf unit. Just the one. And the idea there is that the wolf unit will take out the play claw catapults, and then good luck to the scale and slaves trying to bring down one of these guys. And then we're gonna give you Flock of Doom, I think. Whereas Flock of Doom wouldn't be super effective against Thrott's army, I think it would be pretty darn decent against this pile of scale and slaves. Alrighty. Alrighty. Will any of this work? Oh, I'm just gonna watch both of these armies move away. <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm really hoping that Thrott wants to stop that. Uh, mustering situation. Alrighty, I believe that's everything that we need to do other than building, building, and having Draika attack, so let's just upgrade everything that we need here. Keep upgrading. 
Funny thing is we don't actually care about the territories around Griffinwood anymore because it's basically complete as a territory. Uh, Avalorn is very much incomplete as a territory, but I think we want to keep uh, the guy in Vale at level 1, at least for now, for that 10% income from all buildings. And then we'll see later. Some of you guys have suggested not destroying the elves, and I don't know, I'll think about it. I feel like Draka wants to, and... There's no way we can go without giving Draka the Sword of Cain, right? Like, she has to have it. It would be wrong not to give that to her. Maybe what we could do is if we could somehow meet a faction that is currently fighting Avalorn or Eotain, or ideally Avalorn here, because we need the Shrine of Cain, declare war by joining the fight against Avalorn, and then taking her territories and giving them all to Altharion, keeping a relationship up with him, but also fighting Avalorn at the same time. That's probably the only thing I can think of that will allow us to keep elves on Ulthwan, but uh, not do anything else. I mean, the other option would of course be to somehow get the Galleon's graveyard to take some territory here and give it the entirety of Ulthwan to them. Because we can't make any use of it. It's all useless garbage territory. Hmm. I don't know. If anybody has an idea, any ideas other than uh, what I've postulated there, then uh, uh, let me know. But I think that's what we'll give a try to. But if it doesn't work, we'll just kill all the elves anyway, and then just defend the uh, uh, defend the guy in Vale and let everything else lie in ruins. Anyway, Chrom Soul Flare. Yeah, we'll just fight this manually. Honestly, the game is lying when it's saying that this is going to be a close victory. There's absolutely no way. Absolutely no way. Uh, evasion for you. You, I believe, yes, are ready for your spiteful conjuration. Been waiting on that. And then you guys were just finishing up your spells. You and... Flesh to stone. Alrighty, here we go. Yeah, d considering the armies that Draka's faced off against, I really don't see her uh, having any kind of problems against these two little stacks, which are made up of, I don't know, 80-90% Nurglings? Who cares? Oh, and on top of that, they're going to be separated. Looks like the enemy reinforcements are going to be coming in behind the enemy army, which I guess is good for them. Start deployment, and... Oh, they've deployed here. Okay. So they've deployed further away from us, but we can simply just deploy ourselves here. Okay, well, good luck with that, AI. Like so. Uh, let's put our tree man here. Let's put our... Uh, you know what? There's Abilius Thunderguff, which is quite a nice unit. I think I want, uh, want Coadil to try to duel him. Let's do that. And let's also send the Malevolent Branch Wraith here, the other Malevolent Branch Wraith here. Then we're obviously going to put the Malevolent Tree Can on the edges, like so and like so, to protect the flanks. As per our standard strategy, and then one right in the center. Could also keep the Dryads a little bit further back if we wanted to, just so that the tree can have some room. We have our single point of or use of spiders or unit of spiders back here. And Drake is going to be back here and she's going to charge the enemy lord. Everybody else is going to be group 2. Drake group 1. Doggos, group 3. You can start back there because I'm too lazy to put you here now. Like so. Looks good to me. Group you up and attack. Draka, I want you to befuddle them mischiefly, and then go ahead for the enemy lord. Uh, Koadil, I want you to go for that Bilious Thunder Guff. I also want you to use your power of darkness or whatever it is. Uh, edgy spell. Draka, and for that lord. Spiders, okay, you're just, just do that later. Alright, Draka attack. Let's also remove some of these guys' ammunition. Do we need to buff everybody? Ah, why not? You can also use your Melkoths on the lord. And, oh, Wow, Coadil, you are taking damage fighting that Thunderguff, buddy. Hmm. Okay, that's kind of impressive. Let's regrow ya. I was not expecting Coadil to lose that battle. Okay, looks like you're gonna need to actually activate your spells. Muster of Malevolence, attack that, please. Doggos, looks like we actually might need ya. Alrighty, and look, some more enemies are coming. Let's pop some Dryads in their way while we're busy on this side. Draka has nearly killed the enemy lord, who should be done for quickly. 
And we're gonna save the cinematic battle for the uh, for the fight against the Zinchins, because once again, I still don't feel like this is uh, all that difficult. Even if Koadil did get hurt, he's now regrowing. Alrighty, actually, Koadil, while I have you, block of doom. Ah, you can't use it. Use power of darkness as well. Oh, that was probably what actually partly hurt you. All right, doggos, give chase. You guys go after the thunder guff. Doggos, good, good, and good, I guess. All right, Draka, do you want to chase the enemy lord? Do you want to chase the thunder guy? Oh, there's another lord for you to fight. Nice. All righty, Koadil. Ooh. You guys. Can we dwellers below ya? Apparently not yet. We can now, like so. All right, the thunder guff is nearly dead. Draka, you're heading for the enemy lord, and I want group two such as it is, to cut out this way. All right, Thunderguff is out of the picture, though Koadil did get very badly beat up, which ain't so great. We're gonna have to heal him after the battle is over. Doggo's back out. After the enemy lord, though. Fortunately, everybody else is more or less unhurt. And the dwellers below looking like they're doing good here. I just want Koadil to move into range, and then, you know what, uh, I want you to kill this Thunderguff so it doesn't come back. But if we can use a single Blight of Terror, the enemy will be done. Also, let's pop that Earth Blood on Koadil. Alrighty. And, okay, other than this one unit of Dryads, which is taking damage, looks like the enemy is done for. Alrighty, speed it up to max. We don't need to chase anybody because it's a settlement battle. Let's just give Koadil at least a heal, at least one heal. Okay, you guys group one. Group one, I'll go here, speed it up to max. Probably should have just summoned another unit of Rouse to rat, but damn. Billy has Thunder Guff. He does good work. Alright. Oh, you get heals. Sorry to these Dryads, but they haven't actually lost that many models, so the damage is not really all that consequential anyway. Alright, hopefully that actually got Koadil with the heal there. I think one more will do it. Not overcast. And there we go. He may not be full HP, but he is a single entity unit, so he will be pretty much at full HP afterwards anyway. And like I said, this was certainly not medium casualties out of resolve. I don't know why it thinks that Nurglings were going to stand up against uh, oaked up malevolent dryads with so many buffs. And I know for a fact that the auto resolve does take the stats of units into account. Because before I have checked the difference in auto resolve after getting a few red line stats and buffing up specific units, and it went from, some, from something like valiant defeat to uh, some kind of victory. So. Yeah, uh, let's see. Oh, we got a very nice amount of money for that, so it doesn't even matter that we're gonna lose an extra such and such amount. Yeah, we got like 14 or 15k. Beautiful. And we're now at 77k. <laughs> nice. Uh, now, what the heck? Oh, camera. Yes. Not like that. Thank you. Diplomacy. There's nothing to do, but we do want to do missions, if nothing else. So, ooh. Oh. This guy is one of the options. Well, isn't that lovely? That's a guarantee. Beautiful. And I believe that's the only options we had. Okie dokie. Anybody else need to do anything? No? So I guess we end the turn. We hope that Throt does something, and I guess uh, we hope that the Zinchins attack us as well. You know what? Let's give Isalal a temporary... Uh, what was it called? Forest Spirit. Oh yeah, Forest Spirits. Right here. Oh, we don't have a lot of these guys. No, we do have two, though. All right, oh, well, I guess if we have two, we can give one to Akka. I don't want to lose him. No, I don't want to lose a Forest Spirit. So if Throt attacks Akka, then, yeah. I expect Akka would die, but I really would like him to attack Griffin Wood instead. And I keep waiting on ending the turn, thinking, will this work? Will it not work? Okay, come on. Give me this game, you owe me this much. And oh damn it. <laughs> Scryer. Why do I say damn it? Because they're gonna declare war on us, which means we can't ask Ikit to join the war against Talzin, which means we'll have to directly declare war on them or declare war on one of their allies, which is a little bit annoying. But oh well. Alrighty, and Throt is up next, and he is indeed going to attack, and perhaps surprisingly, he's going to attack. A griffin would, but I'm very happy with that. Uh, all we have to do is keep Strasslith alive, and I'm reasonably sure he can uh, he can work through a lot of this. Ah, alrighty. He doesn't have the lure of life, unfortunately, so he's going to be a lot more vulnerable. I probably could have given better items, but the debuffs offered by the Tormentor Sword and the Helm of Discord should be quite nice. Now, in terms of the leadership, 
Uh, I guess we'll give you the war banner, and oh, we can't actually give this to our garrison forces. Oh, that's kind of stupid. Huh, that's really weird. I could have sworn that when you have two armies, that one army could trade banners to the other. Huh. Am I crazy, or did I... I swear I saw that happen at least once, but I guess it doesn't work with garrison forces. Oh, but this army is sort of garrisoning the settlement. It really should be able to swap banners. Hmm, oh well. Not a big deal. Here we go. This is looking like a pretty fun fight in the game. Says it'll be a Pyrrhic victory at that, so it may be a reasonably difficult one. Lovely. Here we go. Alrighty, well, the bait may have worked, but we still have to win the battle. Uh, as to whether it's going to be super difficult or not, I guess we're gonna have to find out. There's still a Therat at level 22 to kill, after all, and uh, we're only level 3 on Strasleith, but I do have reasonable confidence, at least in some of our units. That said, we do have to remember that we have the uh, Glamoured Elves here, so they're all considerably weaker than they should be. I suppose the melee attack minus five isn't so crazily significant, maybe, uh, but uh, the reload reduction on the uh, on the various range units, I'm not super happy about. Anyway, let's take a quick look at the setup here. We have a unit of ghouls and a unit of malevolent dryads hidden in the center. Obviously, the ghouls have stock, whereas the dryads are either hiding behind this or in the forest. I'm not entirely sure. And uh, the goal for these particular units is to move around the enemy and hopefully hit them here. It looks like for whatever reason, Throt has deployed most of his army over on this side, which includes two units of rattling guns and the units of poison wind Globadiers, which are the main units that we have to kill, the main threats on the field, which is what these guys are going to be dealing with. Over on this side, the enemy has still deployed a few units, including Gorich leading some rad ogres, as well as a single unit of rattling guns and assassin and a few others. And here the plan is essentially to just block them off for as long as possible. The Eternal Guard together with these malevolent Treekin. Oh, and we, uh, we haven't seen a lot of elves. Actually, the Eternal Guard look pretty decent in our color as well. Yeah, certainly a lot, uh, certainly a lot better than the elven colors, in my opinion, as in the standard greenish elven colors of, uh, Talzin. But anyway... And these guys are going to try to hold off Gorge and everybody while taking additional damage from all of, uh, well, three of these Deepwood Scouts units here. We've also actually deployed or built, rather, a few of these barricades with platforms to increase the range of some of our units. We obviously want to do as much damage as possible on the approach, and this did mean sacrificing the... Uh, uh, sacrificing uh, the supply that we would otherwise need to build towers in favor of these barricades. Well, let's hope that it works out. Uh, the main enemy force does have to break through this particular area after all. So, yeah, the barricades will certainly come in handy. Alrighty, and we are going to open up the battle by hitting the uh, Night Runners a little bit, both units dropping by about a third of their HP, but that was only while they were the only thing in range. Obviously, immediately upon getting other more important units in range, like the enemy Rattling Guns and Poison Wind Globadiers, we're immediately going to switch targets to them. And there we go, the Poison Winds are the first target, mostly because they can arc and also they kill things really quickly when they're in range, more quickly than the Rattling Guns, I should say. So we want to target and kill those Poison Winds and then immediately switch to the Rattling Guns afterwards. Speaking of those Poison Winds and the Rattling Guns, let's see what the damage is looking like. Uh, these Rattling Guns are at about half HP and the Poison Winds are approaching and not taking nearly as much damage, presumably because they have storm vermin and these are the shield variety as well and warp grinders interspersed among them which is I guess not so great for us and oh we also have the uh, we also have the graveguard in the purple colors the graveguard from the outpost which I suppose is helping anyway I said graveguard are gonna try to hold the ground right below this barrier hopefully allowing us to not have to uh, get off the barrier for a longer time and this will also mean that the grave guard are going to take the brunt of the enemy assault and the same thing goes for the eternal guard uh, that are standing in the equivalent spot on that side as well still 
I do like how this particular battle looks, at least so far. Certainly a different angle uh, than we're used to seeing having our uh, units fire down from one of these uh, uh, barricades. Now, in terms of the damage dealt so far, it looks like the enemy Poison Wind Globadiers are just about out of the picture and will be done for in a couple shots. And the Rattling Guns will then immediately be switched to and hopefully we can get them. And we do have more units coming in from the background. In fact, we've moved a unit of War Dancers to try to... Uh, to try to move this way as well and help out and hit more enemy units in the back. And that said, the barricade is starting to take damage. The Eternal Guard here, I believe, are out, and our Glade Guard are also being attacked by the Rattling Guns, so they're not going to be in such great shape. Still, it looks like we are holding the ground here fairly well, so these barricades do seem to have been worth it in terms of not immediately building towers. Over on this side, however, it's not going nearly as well. The, uh, uh, the Eternal Guard here are below half HP and are terrified and shaken, running away from Gorich and the Assassin. The Storm Vermin here are trying to rip those Malevolent Treekin apart, and I'm sure we'll be able to mm, do so. Our range units are trying to focus the single unit of Rattling Guns over on this side, but are having a little bit of a tough time, and we are going to have to move some Wildwood Rangers from the main part of our army to try to hold off Gorge, etc. for as long as possible. And the enemy did a smart thing here by separating its Skaven Slaves and Rad Ogres to this side where they're going to grab the supply location and presumably try to go to our final key building, which we will probably have to defend and we will thus send a unit of War Dancers up there shortly. Alrighty, well in the meantime, our Tree Man and the Stress Lith is casting those lovely uh, flocks of doom upon the enemy and since... Uh, Rot did us the great favor of blobbing up the majority of his units over on this side, but we're certainly getting an advantage into you getting more out of that Flock of Doom. Looks like the first of the barriers has fallen and Throt has made his way into the city. His summoned Rad Ogres will hopefully be gone soon, but they've certainly done their job by breaking through. Now the Eternal Guard are gone, those War Dancers with Azrae Spears, anti-large though they may be, will probably be down shortly as well. We're gonna move Strassley in to try to hold back the tide, damage the enemy units, and maybe fight Throt a little bit, but Stressleth is immediately going to start getting focused down by the enemy rattling gun. Smart move by the AI, of course. And this is exactly what we would be doing in their case. And the rattling guns do massive damage to targets like this. Stressleth already having lost a third of his HP and is now stuck in a seismic snare. So great use of that combo by the AI as well. I'm quite impressed, I gotta say. Uh, if they had had all three units of rattling guns here, they uh, they might have been able to kill Strasleith here, even with the Pan's Impenetrable Pelt up to try to counter that. So good job to them. Of course, our other units are now arriving and are getting ready to kill these rattling guns over here, and though we have had to back off a few of our ranged units because they got in trouble as soon as the uh, as soon as the barrier came down. Alrighty, looks like Strasleith's gonna take a few more shots from those rattling guns and more storm vermin are gonna try to stream through, but now we are continuing to focus down said rattlings with our ranged units. Who should be able to take care of them? They're nearly done. I think if I were to play this battle again, I would try to focus the rattling guns down even more, because they did really quite a number on Strasleth, and since he's not the lore of life, he can't repair himself or heal some himself. Fortunately, that is the last of the rattling guns, at least on uh, this side. There was still another rattling gun unit over on this side, which is coming back, but with only a few units in it. Unfortunately, the Treekin were destroyed by the time the rattling guns were gone. Gorich and the Storm Vermin and the Assassin are breaking through through and we're now moving our wildwood uh, rangers or wildwood or deepwood scouts these are not wildwood rangers and the range units deepwood scouts back to our main battle line we've also moved a unit of uh, war dancers up here to our main location where clearly those rad ogres and those skaven slaves are gonna come in we've also started to build towers everywhere these are the level one towers and I decided to just fill up as many tower slots as possible with towers as fast as possible so that we could potentially uh, have them all firing somewhere rather than wait to build one 2,000 point tower. 
Alrighty, now Throt is busily trying to focus down Strasleith. He is, of course, getting hit by the Wildwood Ranger Skier and whatever other units we still have fighting. But we are now focusing Throt down with every single range unit that we have remaining. Of course, he does have regeneration, uh, but uh, his armor is very low, being on a Brood Horror as he is, which is helping out because we do not have a lot of anti-armor or uh, armor-piercing weapon damage on those elves. And of course, once again, Again, because of the glamour, they're not firing nearly as effectively as they should be. 10 reload is not, uh, it's not such a minuscule buff, especially for units that are low veterancy and unbuffed, like all the garrison units. On the bright side, though, with Strasleith hitting Throt and all of our range units focusing him down at the same time, he is starting to drop. It is pretty critical that we do so, of course, and we have sacrificed probably a fair few Wildwood Rangers to our own arrows in order to do this, so uh, let's just hope that it pays off here. And there we go, I do believe I saw Throt trying to run away with Scurry away, and he is out of here, broken, and running away with 526 HP. We're also going to try to get Strasleith out, as he got very badly beat up by that, and we definitely can't have him uh, route, as that might cause a lot more of our other units to route. On the bright side, these units are in very bad shape, as we can see the slivers of HP left on most of Throt's main forces. There is still a unit of Storm Vermin to take care of, of course, and, well, actually, there's more than one unit of Storm Vermin to take care of. Three with decent HP, but they are getting hit in the back, and now that the range units are freed up, they will be able to focus down said Storm Vermin. Unfortunately, uh, Gorge has broken through over on this side, and the Assassin is tying up one of the units of Deepwood Scouts. Gorge is chasing another one around and doing great damage to them as well, using his spin-to-win effect, I'm sure. Kind of interesting that we're seeing Gorich in this campaign, because at the same time, for those uh, watching my uh, uh, my Ikit Claw campaign, we just had Gorich debut. I guess it's uh, I guess it's Gorich's time. Good job, buddy. I love you. Minus the fact that you're killing all of our uh, Deepwood Scouts. Anyway, he's having a fun time there, and it looks like the uh, the Rat Ogres are doing a surprisingly good job fighting these War Dancers. And it's about even, and now they've got that Skaven Slave unit in, so without reinforcements, it looks like the War Dancers will most likely fail. Fortunately, we are bringing more units to reinforce Wildwood Rangers this time. A little bit slower than the uh, War Dancers, of course, in terms of run speed, but they got here eventually, and they should prevent the enemy from grabbing all this. Plus, we do have firepower, or tower support from three towers now and a fourth one soon so as long as we can hold the key building there we will uh, hopefully prevail over these guys now the balance of power is shifting very very slightly in our favor at this point and we are now firing all of our range units into the backs of these storm vermin they are no longer very well positioned and they're all still very much blobbed up and ripe for flocks of doom Alrighty. Well, uh, the damage probably isn't too crazy from our range units into the uh, heavily armored Storm Vermin, because once again we lack armor piercing on most of those units. But it looks like the enemy are dropping. Just watching the spectacle here, and uh, for once I guess we get to see the elves fight. Of course, we will be seeing quite a bit more of that as the campaign progresses, and, but for now, it's still something of a rarity. Strathlaith rather comes back into the fight, drops another flock of doom, but also debuffs the enemy with both his Helm of Discord and his Tormentor's Sword, and together with his terror, looks like he manages to see the rest of them off. Uh, looks like the enemy Rad Ogres are just about done here, and same with the Skaven Slaves, as we have brought several ranged units up here to make sure that we don't lose the key building. Otherwise, it looks like there's still a few more enemy units on the field that Assassin is still fighting, and Gorich might still have to be taken care of, depending on if he, uh, uh, if he comes back and continues to fight or not. Alrighty, well, well done to the Wildwood Rangers for holding ground here, but now the actual powerful units that we have, i.e. the ranged units, and what the Wood Elves are known for, are here to take care of business. 
But damn, really good job to these Rad Ogres. I'm very impressed that they managed to essentially kill a unit of, granted, Glamoured and Thus Weak, Wildwood Rangers, and a unit of War Dancers. I've always seen the, uh, that uh, Rad Ogres is one of the more fragile units, so, yeah. Hence, being impressed. Alrighty, well, it looks like the enemy assassin is still moving around, and let's see, he's got 78 kills to his name. That's pretty damn good, considering he's not really an infantry blender hero. And more importantly, here comes Gorich, ready to try and avenge Thrott. Probably should have been bodyguarding him when, uh... Uh, when he was fighting, and we're actually going to get Strasleith the heck out of there. Granted, Gorch is an infantry blender, but we don't want him killing Strasleith. Rather, it's better to use our Dryads and our other melee units, such as they remain, or so those ones that remain alive, while our range units actually do the damage. Meanwhile, Strasleith can fight the Assassins, while they're certainly good at killing Lords, they don't hit very hard at only 357, and they will take a lot of damage as well. Alrighty, and it looks like Gorge, damn, look at that mass. It looks like, however, he's going to try to spin to win again right uh, before exploding, and with that, the rest of his army will collapse and fight no more. We still had a decent amount of ammunition and HP on several of these units, and of course, more range units up here. These ones are basically at full HP as well. Uh, yeah, all our melee units got absolutely wrecked, but the range ones remain alive, so we still had somewhere to go. Honestly, I a little bit regret using the beast lore. Let's see what the damage is. Then again, 25k, though how much of that came from the actual flocks of doom, and how much of that came from the murder of spites? I'm not sure. I am genuinely not sure. Obviously it was probably a combination of both, um, but I feel like Earthblood might have been more helpful here. And on the other hand, well then Awakening of the Wood would have also been quite useful in those blobs, so... Both could have been sufficient. Anyway, that was really fun. That was really, really fun. I'm doubly glad that Throd actually went for this bait now. Actually a little bit tough. At least for a melee unit. Yeah, I wonder what the battle would have been like if we had fought with Akka 2 instead. Clearly Thra didn't want to go for Akka 2, whether it was from the bait or from the fact that he realized he didn't want to fight all those fast-moving wolves and, uh, and spiders and bears and whatnot. Hmm. Well, I suppose we'll never know, at least not until Thrott comes back, but when he comes back, he probably won't come back with a uh, an army of the same level eliteness. This was probably the stack he's had for most of the game, and judging by the fact that everybody was like 8th or 9th uh, Chevron veterancy. So it'll probably considerably weaken his faction by the fact that they're gone. Anyway, a Pyrrhic victory for us, but uh, damn well fought to stress Leith and his uh, little uh, little army of garrison elves. Ooh, alrighty, that was a lot better a battle than I originally thought it was gonna be. Certainly a lot closer. Now, Throt's army is basically destroyed. I probably shouldn't have worried as much about Throt doing damage, because he only managed to hit around 8k, whereas Gorich hit 15k and got more than twice as many kills. Yeah. Gotta pay attention to the big guns. Uh, speaking of the big guns, that one unit of rattling guns. I guess that was this one. With the 8k damage, probably not so much the kills, but the fact that they lowered uh, Strasleith's health fairly considerably and didn't go too uh, great. And that said, while most of our melee units got very badly beat up for their trouble, most of our range units were still alive and did still have ammunition, so if they wanted to, uh, they could very well have continued kiting the enemy around, or begun, I suppose, kiting the enemy around, so we still had reserves at the end there. And that said, I'm very happy with the battle actually being a very nice one. Uh, now, I suppose we will, well, actually, I guess it's pointless to abduct rats. Uh, let's go for release captives to get a little bit of our money back. And <laughs> I almost... Wait. Throt is recruiting. Well, that's interesting. 
And what is this? Caravan of Blue Roses is going to attack the Scrap Towers completely pointless. Slee, why would you do that? Look, it's, it's units are dead. What is this? Why would you do this? They're all gonna be back alive. Wow, look at that. Ray's dead. Brings them all back alive. A very strange move by the Caravan of Blue Roses here. I don't really understand what happened here. Oh, wait, are they dead? Did, did somebody kill them? Wait, one second. So they're alive, but they attacked us. Despite the fact that the auto-resolve says that we had the advantage, I feel like this means that they lost their last settlement. Oh, wait. Clan Ferric didn't attack- Oh, Okay, so this this plan half worked. Clan Ferric did, decided not to attack Isolol, and in fact, we can't even see them. Ally mobilizes, ally mobilizes. Strasleth got himself a Vols Anvil Smith. Well, I guess he earned that, and he's got extra hit points. Okay, I guess we'll be keeping him around at some point. Ooh, confederation between Reichland and Marienburg. Great for Reichland. But Marien... Well, the the the, uh, the people of Marienburg would never go for that. Uh, ally mission successful, Western provinces. Ally occupies settlement. Hey, they did it. They actually destroyed Zufbar. I gotta say, I'm impressed. I wasn't expecting that. And Lamy and Sisterhood. Yeah, we know that was gonna die. Missile focus. <laughs> okay, sure. Uh, whispers in the forest or whispers in the woods. Oh. We have one beside us here. Improve the local forest's health, which does nothing for us. Buildings damage in... Oh, it's Fort Jacova. Eight to repair. Fairly costly, game. Fairly costly. Now... Huh. Oh, wait. Okay, Isalal can't reach us, but Akka 2 may also be able to get the Throt defeat trait, so I'm gonna want to move you here. Might as well farm throughout the feature rates in case we bring these lords back. And then we'll send you back here. And we should be able to auto-resolve this. He's mustering, but he's about to be dead. Auto-resolve. Yeah, this is probably gonna hurt us. Eh, maybe not. Alrighty. Gotta be thankful for Throt uh, for giving us the battle. Treasury or replenishment. I guess we're probably no need for replenishment. But, nonetheless. Akka. Now, both of you... And we probably want to delete you. Tal is nearly here to deal with you. I wonder if Engelbert's gonna capture Aberheim. He really should. In fact, I generally wonder what exactly these guys are doing. Looks like they're gonna go up to Kappelberg. I guess we can send Akka or Strasleith up there. As an Akka too. Hmm. We gotta delete one of them, and I'm inclined to say we keep Strasleth. A, because I've already given him the items, and I don't feel like giving him more. And B, because... wait. Let's send him here. And B, because he's a higher level. And C, because I like Murder of Spite. So, we're gonna send you... A little pile of units right here. And we're gonna delete you, Akka 2. Also, it would be very confusing to have another Raka, so goodbye. All right, now we're back down to 10k. Throt is gone. Is this Isalal needed? I'm not sure. We don't know where Clan Ferric went. It could be back up here, but it could also be sitting here in ambush, so maybe we keep this Isalal around for at least one turn. Let's also rebuild the growth building. Not that... I'm almost tempted to just go for Sacrificial Grounds now. I mean, I guess we're giving this all to Vlad anyway, but uh, the post-battle loot and the income from raising settlements, especially if we're going to go after Kislev, maybe this would be the better pick here. Alrighty, and actually, I have just to double-check, what were the other options again? Casualty or punishment trade growth for all provinces. Maybe we just start replacing all these with waystones. Hmm, and just grow everything nearby. This is all adjacent. Yeah, we don't really care about the adjacent stuff. All right, fine, fine, fine. We'll go for the sacrificial thing here. Stress left. You stay alive or stick around or whatever. And... Do you need more bats? I mean... Mm, I think you're fine. I don't think that slave army could hurt you. So we'll just keep you around. All righty, next up, Draka. Oh, wow, damn, that battle took a long time. I didn't even realize. Oh, hello. Well, well, well. If it isn't Imric's forces. Now, first of all, Gorsty is here. Now he is still alive. What the heck? Why did why did you do this, Gorst? Oh wow, what? He healed to half. 
How did he do that? Wait, what? He literally has more health on these units than he did before. I don't understand what's going on with this faction. How did they heal in our territory while having lost a battle and are, and they're not in any stances? I take it, wait, raise dead or the dead rise again gave them more HP than they had to start with? Huh. Well, interesting if true. Uh, what I do want to know is, have you defeated Gorst? And I don't remember what his trait is. Kugeth, wander no more, that's Nakai. No, you have not. Hmm. This is obviously auto-resolvable, but I'm not entirely sure whether Dulcet can actually do it. Uh, huh. Do we move Draika back in? Kind of annoying to do so. Also, how do you feel about us? Power and the glory of you know what, Imric might be a good pick for an ally. There's no trees back here, he can just hold the ground. He's nearly ready for a trade agreement, in fact would do it for a little bit of cash. He's fighting the Darklands Lords, Clan Morse, and Clan Rictus. I do wish I knew how strong each of these factions were. Looks like they're about even. In fact, they're identical. Clan Moore's real or Clan Rictus generally doesn't do super well. And just to take a look, how much Skaven corruption do we have nearby? Looks like not a lot. Wait, can we even see corruption in this part of the like let's say we take a look at here. This is all clan clan fair. Yes. Alrighty, you know what? I'm gonna join War Against Clan Rictus. We'll probably we would probably be fighting them eventually anyway. Give us a little bit of cash. I'm just trying to figure out, or I'm wondering whether there's any reason not to ally with Imric. And I'm really not seeing one. No one does it better. Alrighty, let's do that. Actually, it might be nice to have access to Sisters of Avalorn if we can, uh, if we can keep them friendly. So, Draika, I was originally going to send you to Ruin Zen, which is probably worth, like, a decent amount of cash, but I do feel like we should probably have Gorsty killed here, so I'm going to move you in March Stance here instead. And Dulcith, rather, is going to auto-resolve Gorst. We'll leave Pig Barter to, uh, to these guys, I guess. And decisive victory, obviously. This is all weak and pathetic. At least the remnants of that force is. And I probably should have checked whether the auto-resolve would have killed any of our units, but we're looking okay. I got some money out of that. I'm gonna heal up. Actually, now that I think about it, I probably should not have... Oh, you don't have the plague anymore. Scrap Towers isn't plagued up. Oh, that's nice. Oh, that's real nice. Never mind, I am glad that we moved back here. Because otherwise we would have moved to Ruin's End and that uh, wouldn't have been as good. Lovely. Oh, it gives you straight up poison attacks. Uh, You didn't have a contact effect before, did you? What does Draika have again? She has Dampen. Dampen is a contact effect. Oh, okay, so we really shouldn't defeat Gorst with Draika. Because this would overwrite Dampen, which would make the Fang of Talroth completely useless, wouldn't it? Okay. Oh, I'm really glad we didn't hit him with Draika then. Uh, we do probably need to send you to Kara Krakat and just destroy the faction so they don't come back and we don't accidentally have to kill you with Draika. So in that light, Draika, you're gonna start moving towards Shatterstone Bay. And Dalsith, I guess you're going up. Up here, buddy. Uh... You know what? Let's get some more temp troops. If you're gonna have to function alone here, and we'll have to pay more for it, but whatever. It's fine. I like a full stack. Honestly, I'm way past caring about an extra like 200, uh, 200 gold per turn at this, or 2,000 gold per turn at this point. Alrighty, go up here, take out Kara Krakaton, make sure those guys are gone for good. Imric isn't fighting them, but that's fine. Alrighty, well, unfortunately, I do believe with that we're out of time. Quite a lengthy episode, uh, despite the fact that uh, we were planning to do a number of other things. But uh, Mount Gunbad can wait until the next episode. Now, speaking of next episode, next time, the Jungles of Chion, we will probably have solved the issue for good here as we will attack uh, Hikilfoth here. And it looks like we will be drawing out the garrison as well. So at least one massive cinematic battle to start that episode off. In addition to that, Durthu is poised to attack Vidrioth whenever he wants. We could also ignore Vidrioth and move out here to potentially attack Kingsglaive while it's relatively undefended. The benefit of that would be the fact that the Crags of Fendal are currently looking for an upgrade. So there's certainly potential for that. 
really don't want to lose Paravon, so maybe we'll set up a temporary lord here, move Colas in to help, and attack the four and attack the Oak of Ages and just take out the uh, Talls and Elves first. I don't know. I'll think about it, but uh, we'll have to stay tuned for next time to find out what the uh, uh, what the plan there is. Everything else is going pretty good. We're advancing north once more. Tala is nearly here as well to help out to uh, take the fight to the Skaven and start giving Vlad stuff up there. Akka will be able to get Mount Gunbad for probably 20 to 30k sack value. So we'll be back over 100,000 gold. And unless I'm missing something... It's looking pretty nice. Plus, next episode, we will have completed the Jungles of Chion, most likely Ritual, and thus a lot of cheaper units will be... Uh, well, a lot of our units will be cheaper. So anyway, stay tuned for all that. Don't forget to leave a like and comment. All glory to the algorithm. And thanks for watching.